Hello. Um, welcome to the uh, basics of VR and Unity workshop. I am Alex Krasner. I'm one of the graduate assistants uh, working for the uh, virtual environment studio at the libraries at Virginia Tech. And yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, so uh, one quick disclaimer. Um, I think if anyone has attended the uh, live workshop version of this, I start by giving a very big, uh, an extended overview of the basics of Unity. Um, however, uh, since this is the video form, if you're watching this right now, uh, there's another video that covers the basics of Unity that I've already made. So um, I would recommend you watch that first and then come to here if you want to uh, focus on VR. So anyway, let's get started. So here we are looking at Unity Hub. All I did was open up Unity Hub and um, I already have the latest version of Unity 2020 LTS installed, um, which is currently 2020.332F1. Um, at the time you're watching this, maybe 2021 will have gone into LTS. Uh, whatever the case, I would recommend that you find the latest LTS version and install that for tutorials in general, since then you will have the most stable experience. It's not going to be something that might have some bugs or get broken. Um, but just so you know, we will be doing this tutorial on 2020.3.32 F1 LTS. So I'm going to make a new project. Uh, let's make a project together. I'm just going to go new project, make sure it's set to the version I would like, make sure I choose 3D. Um, I know there's a VR one down here, but trust me, it will just make your life worse. <laughs> uh, it does not really give you the tools you need to make a good VR um, application or even the things to start on one properly. Um, it's mostly just going to be in your way. So it's better to start from scratch and to build it up yourself. Um, so we just click on 3D to do that. You give it a name, call it VR, call it Open VR Workshop. Project. Sorry for my typing mistakes. And um, yeah, let's. We can see it's going into a into the folder Z code. I'm just going to click create. Cool. And uh, now it's just creating it. And uh, for now, we will wait. And I will uh, skip to. Uh, the opened version of Unity. And the project has finished loading. I'm going to just quickly go over one last thing, which is uh, you'll notice under here I have chosen when installing to choose Android, UWP, and Windows. Uh, you can access these if you don't have them installed by going to Add Modules and selecting them. You select all of the Android ones, you'd select Universal Windows platform build support and Windows build support. Uh, critically, if you want to run a game on Windows in VR, you're going to want Windows build support. If you want to run a game uh, or a VR uh, application with uh, the Windows mixed reality headsets, you're going to want to make sure that you have universal Windows platform build support turned on. And finally, if you want to build something for Oculus Quest or maybe for an Android phone, you're going to want to make sure that you have Android build support turned on. Okay, most of this tutorial today will be just for building for PC uh, on just any any old uh, VR headset, but uh, I wanted to make sure that you had a heads up on that. So, on to Unity. All right, so now that we're in Unity, um, this should look familiar to you if you watched my uh, previous video that goes over the basics of Unity. Again, hierarchy tab shows all of our objects in a list and it shows us the uh, relationships between them if they are parent or child of each other which means uh, if the transforms are linked to, to each other or not um, the scene is where we can look at what our game looks like um, from any angle we want whereas the game is looking straight from the perspective of the camera uh, the inspector is where we can see the components of each object 
and down below we have the project tab which is our file explorer and our console which is where we can see our errors okay uh, but the first thing we're gonna do here is actually go to the asset store so you may have this tab you may not um, it, if you have the tab it's just gonna tell you to go straight to the website so when I click this it should pull up the asset store right here uh, in Chrome or whatever browser is your default and um, you'll notice right now by the way when I click a yellow circle will appear when I normal click and if I right click a blue circle will appear so um, keep track that'll hopefully help you keep track of my clicks all we're gonna do though is type in world materials free you can see it already pops up for me but I'll type it in here just for a parallel right, press and you'll see it says I already have it it says purchased um, it's free though so normally there'll be something here telling you to add to unity or something like that um, make sure that you are signed in to the unity website with the same exact account as you are signed in in the unity app if you you'll see when I click here in unity uh, up top there's account you want to make sure that you are signed in there so you want to be signed in there and on the store and then all you have to do is uh, you know you click the add and then you'll say open in unity and it should open it up in the package manager in unity so um, what we're trying to do right now is we're just going to build a very basic little world for us to uh, experiment with virtual reality in so yeah uh, we're trying to get some materials which are basically textures um, with a uh, material in unity is basically a texture but with um, extra details and extra layers to it that make up how something looks. Um, I think I went over that in the previous video, but I'm just covering it again uh, just in case. So we're gonna just import world materials free. If it doesn't start selected, you'll see it in this list and you want to click on it. So we're gonna import it and um, it's it pulled this up. Normally it'll pull this up on your screen, but it pulled it up on a separate monitor because of um, how I previously ran this workshop um, so it'll pull it up on your screen and all you want to do is click import uh, you're gonna notice there might be some errors here um, but they're nothing that will really matter uh, as long as we don't use the errored textures um, you'll, you'll see what I mean in a moment um, we're really just gonna be using the the simple first folder that it gives us um, you could, if you wanted, go through and carefully deselect certain folders. Um, that The ones that contain the issue, I believe, is the HDRP ones. Um, but you don't need to. Uh, it's not really going to make a difference one way or the other. So here you see, in URP free, couldn't open the file. Uh, that is fine. Uh, you'll see down here in our assets, we now have world materials free. And uh, the only folder here we're going to care about is built in RP materials. Go into here and you'll see all the materials live. So I'm going to close the package manager for now. We will be using it later. And I'm going to switch us over to the scene view and let's build our world. So, uh, first things first, when building a world, I like to have a ground. Uh, let me get rid of this red, by the way, to get rid of any warnings you just go into console and click clear. You can even choose when it'll auto clear, but I'm just gonna clear right now. And uh, let's make a floor. So to do that, I'm just gonna go right click. You can also go to game object. But I'm gonna show it here as right click, 3D object, terrain. Boom. And you'll see now we have this enormous uh, area. <laughs> it is exactly 1000 by 1000 unity in world units and a unity in world unit scales to almost exactly a uh, meter in the real world. So, um, But we're on the corner of it. You'll notice zero zero is right here in our world space but uh, the thing just extends out 
in a thousand in each direction. So if we want to put ourselves in the middle of it, we want to move it to be 500 that way and 500 that way, so that there's 500 on all sides. So all we got to do is go to position, and on our x, we type negative 500, because we're moving it back 500, and on our z, we type negative 500. And boom, now we are in the middle. Our camera, our light, everything is in the very middle of this enormous plane. Awesome. You can look around again. Um, I believe I covered this in the previous video, but uh, to look around, all I'm doing is right clicking and holding and then flying around with WASD and E and Q. Cool. All right. So now we can see we're in the middle of this field, but I don't think you know, most of the things you make, you're probably not going to want to live in like a checkerboard, right? So, uh, let's give this world some features. First things first, let's make it so that our ground looks like ground. Uh, so to do that, um, Unity terrains have this special feature where you can kind of go around and paint them. And um, I don't know how much we're going to cover that today, uh, but what we are going to do is cover building a just like a little area to mess around with physics in VR. But what does matter is we do have to use their paint tool in order to add any color at all to this ground. So to do it, we just click on paint terrain. It looks like a paintbrush over here. I'm gonna leave it on paint texture. All we gotta do is go down here to edit terrain layers, create layer, and now that you've at imported these textures, you should be able to find in here. Um, in fact, I'll just type it in grass. And this one, grass clumps albedo. Um, what this is, is think of it like the texture part of there's a grass clumps material in here. And the image part of it, the texture image, uh, is called grass clumps albedo. And uh, we're just going to add that as a layer. And so whatever the base layer is on a terrain, um, will show up as the main color of the whole terrain. So uh, right now we've got our huge world of grass. Mm -hmm. And uh, perhaps in future videos, I will go over the features over here. There's ways to add trees, ways to lift up the ground to make mountains and different things. Um, but for now, I'm just going to uh, have us stay in the grass, but let's make a little room for ourselves, all right? Uh, so first things first, um, I kind of want to know where the center of the world is. I believe the camera is starting actually at negative 10. That's not really the center. I'm just going to change that to zero. And uh, let's fly over here. Okay. Let's add some walls. I think I'd like some walls behind the camera or around the camera. Adding walls is very simple. Just going to right click in here and create a cube. And uh, you'll notice whenever you spawn an object in Unity, it spawns it a set distance away from the scene view camera. The way we are looking at the world right now, it sets, spawns it at the center of our scene view at some set distance away. Which in this case means it put it underground and very far away from us. So let's get that fixed. All we have to do is just set the uh, all of these back to zero, zero, zero. The shortcut I always use for that is clicking these three dots and just pressing reset on the transform for the cube. Okay. Um, one thing I'm noticing right now is that uh, we do not have any handles to move around our objects. Uh, this is a very common thing that happens and people will get confused like I'm selecting it Why why aren't the handles popping up? What I mean by handles is normally when you click on an object There's arrows that show up around it and all this means is that unity uh, Has decided that we don't have a tool selected right now So to select a tool this top thing up here. These are all tools I'm just going to click the move tool and suddenly there we go. We have arrows on each of these objects once more and uh, we could drag these around if we wanted to. All right, uh, right now it's inside of the camera though, so 
maybe let's uh, I'm trying to make some walls here so probably make it pretty tall how about um, maybe 10 that's pretty tall that's nice all right um, and then how about and I noticed that it's scaling underground but we just can't see what's underground um, this it doesn't have to be precise in any way that's why I'm leaving a bunch underneath the ground uh, and we should also make it a little bit wide too right so how about on our uh, z-axis we increase the scale by I don't know 30 that seems pretty large how about 15 that's good okay so I'm just gonna step out real quick, zoom out, take a look. Put this wall here. And uh, right now, you know, white walls don't really feel that realistic. So let's give the walls a texture. You can choose whatever color you want, but in this built-in RP materials section, you'll find all these materials. How about maybe a wooden, mm, maybe this one. Yeah, I like that. Wooden flooring, even though I'm using it for a wall. Um, you'll notice that the texture gets stretched because we are scaling the because um, we are scaling the object. Um, there are ways to mitigate that by changing the texture itself for the object, uh, but in this case, we're just kind of going to let these wood planks be really wide since that's not the focus of today's video. The focus of today is to just uh, mess around with VR in Unity. So we've got ourselves this big wooden wall and I'm now going to make a copy of it. I'm just going to right click on Q over here and click duplicate. And you'll see the duplicated one is selected. So when I drag this across, it leaves the other one behind. Looking good, looking good. Let's make one back wall. I don't think we need a front wall. Uh, so I'm just gonna again duplicate and I want to rotate this uh, 90 degrees around the y-axis the vertical one I want it to turn clockwise so we do positive 90 and there we go let's make this our back wall okay I know it's very haphazard it's not very precise I'm sorry to those of you who may um, be feeling a little annoyed at how imprecise it is, um, but feel free on your own to make them as precise as you would like. Okay, the next step though is to add uh, a little, some, something for us to play around with in VR. I like to play around with um, spheres are pretty cool because if you have a sphere, it'll roll around, uh, which means you can kind of throw it, bounce it off of things. Um, so let's make a little stand for our sphere to, to sit on and let's make a little ball so uh, first things first I'm gonna add this time I'm doing it from the top menu just to show you how you do it I'm gonna add 3d object cube once more I'm gonna send it back to zero again because it put it into the middle of the void and I think this is a pretty good height for it honestly I'm just gonna move it over here and uh, let's give it a color something to look like how about we make it out of brushed aluminum. I like that. Cool. All right, we have a brushed aluminum stand. Now let's make our sphere. So we just go to 3D object sphere and boom. Sphere, once again, they placed it way below the world. I'm just gonna reset it. And it's now over here. This is a pretty big sphere though. This sphere is almost it's like a meter by a meter uh, that is probably too large for you know holding if you picked up a ball with a meter diameter you'd probably have a difficult time you know holding it and throwing it around and stuff so let's change the size um, how about maybe um, 0.2 times so I'm just gonna go into scale for it and type 0.2 for each of the coordinates. Uh, I believe there's something new in Unity 2021 where you can link all of them together, but uh, if you, we are not in the, we are in 2020, so. All right, and this ball is pretty high. 
above this surface, but you know, let's leave it there so I can show you physics later. Um, for now, the last thing to do is to color our ball. I really like these hex bricks. Um, it kind of reminds me of a soccer ball. So I'm just going to place that on it. And there we go. There we have it. All right. So now we have our sphere in our little playhouse and the rest of this large expanse. You'll see if we look through the camera right now, it's just looking out there. Um, I, I kind of want the camera to point at the ball um, so that we can see things. So I'm just going to go to main camera and I'm going to turn it negative 90. Since it's looking at that way, I want to turn it counterclockwise around the y-axis. I'm going to go negative 90 and boom. Now suddenly we are looking straight at the ball. Fantastic. All right, now one finishing touch I want to add here is um, I want to make it so that this ball um, has physics so that we can play with it once we get into VR. So uh, the last step is we're going to give the ball physics. You'll notice right now if we press play, it shows it, the ball's just staying there in the air. Um, it's not really a dynamic object. So to give the ball physics, all we have to do is click on its name, click on sphere, go to the bottom, you'll find add component. And when we click on that, we want to type in rigid body. Do not click the 2D one. Make sure you click the normal one. All right. That's it. <laughs> as soon as you put a rigid body onto any object in Unity, it gains physics. So uh, let's take a look right now. If we press play, we should. Yeah, you, you saw it fall. It was very quick because um, gravity is pretty fast. <laughs> um, but yeah, now the ball has physics. It's able to fall. It's able to roll. And we'll be able to play with it soon. Okay. All right. So the next feature that we want to do is add VR. Let's get in there. Let's start playing around in our little space we've made. So um, first thing we want to do is go to edit project settings. And at the very bottom, you'll see something called XR plugin management. And when we go there, first thing we got to do is install it. So click install and it will install the XR plugin management package into your project. And yes, you will have to do this every time you make a new project. So, all right, we've got all these w menus up here. Uh, today, we're going to be focusing on building for PC VR. But if you wanted to uh, set up things for perhaps maybe running on an Oculus Quest, you'd go over here. If you wanted to run it on a Windows Mixed Reality headset, you'd want to go over here. But um, today, we're just going to do PC. And we're going to use something called OpenXR. This is the new standard. Any new headsets coming out are almost exclusively using OpenXR as their plugin for running uh, VR things and AR things these days. So um, that is why we're going to use that. And you'll notice once we click it that it says that it uses the new input package. So we need to restart to enable that. Just click yes. It's going to restart your Unity. Oh, and uh, thankfully it asks you to save. So, all right. And once it restarts, we have our um, OpenXR plugin added. Now you'll notice there's a little warning sign here. And when we click on it, it should pull up on your screen this called OpenXR Project Validation. So to fix this, <laughs> to fix these issues, all you have to do is just press Fix All, and it will fix uh, one of them. There's one that we actually have to fix by hand. So you'll, it'll just take us right there if we click Edit. What they want us to have is an interaction profile. Think of this as the way that the system knows how to talk to your headset and your controllers. You know, if you have different controllers and different headsets, uh, there's a bunch of built-in profiles for like how to understand the inputs from those. So um, all we got to do is click this little plus button and 
I'm using Oculus Touch controllers, but let's say you had a uh, Vive, you choose Vive controllers. Uh, if you wanted to make it for everything, you just add all of them. So you choose HTC Vive, you choose Valve Index controller, yada, yada, yada. And uh, th these are all the different platforms of controllers, uh, which it will understand. Yeah, you could even use the hand interaction or eye gaze for different types of things that allow it. Uh, one last thing we want to do while we're on this page is change our render mode to multi-pass. Uh, best way to think of it is uh, if you're doing single pass, the computer looks at the scene through both of the person's eyes, but then renders uh, the image as one image kind of stitched together. And what this means is it's kind of taxing. It's pretty difficult to uh, rewrite the full image over and over again, rather than rewriting two separate images at the same time over and over again. For Because in VR, you're always gonna be rendering the viewpoint from each of your eyes. Uh, so anyways, by choosing multi-pass, uh, that changes it. So now it kind of renders both of our eyes in parallel. However, if your computer can't handle running this kind of task in parallel, then you might want to stick to single pass, but multi pass uh, is drastically better for VR. It's really the recommended way to go, and you'll find that lots of textures don't work when you're in single pass in VR. So, definitely recommend changing the setting to multi pass. Just wanted to give you a little background on it. Okay, so you'll you'll see now. There's no issues left. We can close this, and we will move on to adding the interaction toolkit. Uh, so we have some inter interaction profiles, but um, we don't have anything coded for how we want to use the controllers, right? Um, maybe it can tell us, like it's getting the data from the controllers now, but it doesn't know how, like what to do with that. So, you know, you could code the whole thing from scratch, but that's a lot of work. Uh, instead, we're going to use the sample ones that they give us and build off of those. So. To get to them, all we have to do is go to Window, Package Manager, and uh, you probably don't have as many packages showing up as I do when we do this, um, but let's go to Unity Registry. So I just clicked here and went to Unity Registry. You'll see a very long list. If we scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll notice XR Plugin Management is installed. That's what we did. If you wanted to install it, you didn't even have to go to Project Settings. You could just come straight to the Package Manager and install it. But I think it's nicer to just kind of already be in Project Settings. And uh, you'll see right above it, we have XR Interaction Toolkit. So uh, this is something we want to install. It will basically give us the ways uh, to interact with stuff in VR and AR. So I'm just going to click Install. It's going to add it to our project and it will uh, let us do cool things. Add to a project and add to a project and now we just wait for a moment. So um, they've changed the way that <laughs> interaction mask layers work. Um, it's not really a big deal for us. All we do is just click OK, and it's done. We have all of the features now. Now all that we have to do is um, add the sample assets that they give us. So we just click on this little drop down, click on starter assets. You can ignore device simulator. It is kind of nice. It lets you simulate being a device when you're in the uh, in the play button view. But personally, I would rather just put on a headset and try it out. Okay, there you go. It, it already imported the starter assets, and now we can close um, this window. There's one last thing I want to change up in our project settings, and that would be under uh, quality. And uh, I just want to change the pixel light count to one. Texture quality is good. Anisotropic textures change to per texture and anti aliasing to 4x. 
turn off soft particles. It's, this should just help you out uh, if your computer needs a little bit of help. You could leave it on, but I would recommend making these changes. It, uh, in general, helps with running VR. It's a tough thing to run and render anyway. Okay. So we've made those changes. Um, now what we want to do is set up. There's, there's like one last kind of weird thing we have to do. And it's we're going to be setting up the controllers um, with we're kind of connecting them to the samples we just downloaded to the sample interaction kind of techniques that we just downloaded in samples so to get to that um, it might already be downloaded here I'm gonna close project settings it should show yeah it might already just show up here uh, it would be under samples XR interaction toolkit 201 starter uh, assets and you'll see these things that look like weird slider boards and then one thing that looks like a map with a lightning bolt and a play button all right uh, we're gonna click on each of these and we're going to click this button up top add to action base continuous move provider uh, basically when we click this button it adds kind of like a preset for how we are going to be moving around in the world to to our preferences so uh, I don't know. It's a little bit confusing, and I hope in the future they streamline this a bit more. But for now, all you do is you click on each of these, and then you click the button that shows up up top. You'll notice when we click it, it changes to say remove. So if it says remove, that means you already added it. You're good. So once we've added all five of these, the next thing we want to do is uh, change one more thing, and that is under edit project settings. I know I just closed it, but I just closed it to get out of our way. We're going to go to preset manager and you'll see the names of all of these are now populated here. So what do we do? We just want to, uh, right here, we want to give a filter so that all of the right controller things get sent to the right controller and all the left ones get sent to the left controller. All we have to do for that is type right under right and left under left. I know. It seems kind of opaque and weird, but it's just what we have to do right now with how they've built it. So that's what you got to do. And we're good to move on to uh, running VR. So you may notice we still have our main camera here. And our main camera is kind of in 2D. Here, let me clear these out. Our main camera is 2D, right? Like it's rendering to a flat screen that we're looking at. Um, as VR enthusiasts would call it, it's a pancake game. <laughs> but let's make it into a 3D game, right? All we have to do to do that is kind of swap out this camera. And uh, the way that you do that in OpenXR is once we've installed all of the stuff, once we've set up all these things that we just set up, we want to right click here go to XR, you'll see this is a new category here, right? XR, and I want to choose XR Origin Action Based. You're going to notice we're going to be choosing a lot of things that are action based because that is the new version. So um, you may, like there's old XR Origin, there may be other ones, just remember to always choose action based if it's an option. So XR Origin Action Based, what happened to our camera? Well, what happened is the XR Origin uh, takes the camera. If we go into scene, you'll see. Um, it kind of takes ownership of the camera, moves it inside of here, inside of an offset. And um, so that's why it took the camera away from us. Where is the XR Origin, you might ask? In the middle of nowhere. Because <laughs> uh, every object that you spawn always spawns that set distance away from the from the scene view like I said so uh, we just want to take it and move it back to zero zero I'm gonna take the XR interaction manager which is also down in who knows where and bring it back as well there we go now everything is where it's supposed to be alright if you were to hit run right now you would be able to look around in VR assuming you have a VR headset connected um, however 
you would not be able to move around your hands. So the final thing we need to do is add something to this interaction manager so it knows how to access our hands. And to do that, we want to go to add component. We want to type in input action manager. And you'll see I just typed I in and it already showed up. All right, and then under it, you'll see action assets. Well, the assets we want are this weird map looking thing that's stored inside of samples, XR interaction toolkit, 2.01 starter assets. So uh, we need, first need to make a space for it. So I'm gonna click this arrow. I'm gonna add a plus to add an element and I'm gonna drag the map with the lightning bolt into this little box and we're good. Now it knows how to control our hands. So I'm just gonna save just in case and uh, let's show this on a VR headset. So if you're using an Oculus Quest 2 and you're plugging it in through anything, you will need to make sure you have the Oculus app open. And I'm going to use Airlink, uh, which means that I need to have settings turned on for that. But then all i got to do is just want to take your headset and enter link mode. And uh, if you're on something else, then you should be good to go as soon as you've effectively plugged in your headset. Uh, you may need Steam VR to be open for it to work if you have a Steam VR headset. And um, yeah, everything's set up. I'm just going to click play. Let's see how it goes. There you have it. Here I am in the mystical, magical world of my creation. I've got these almost like lightsabers for hands. And. Um, yeah, but you'll see, I can't really move around, right? Um, I can move around in my space, but I can't walk out. I can't walk all the way over there. You know, how am I going to get there? So, uh, the first thing we should add is a way to move. All right, so I'm going to take off my headset, turn this off, and so. And let's add movement. So they make it really, really easy to add movement, otherwise known as locomotion, uh, to your VR game. All you gotta do is right click here. Once again, you could also go to game object, but I just like to right click, it's easier. We go to XR, we go to locomotion system action based, and voila, here are the different ways to move around. And uh, you'll see by default it already gives us a teleportation provider and a snap turn provider. And this is all of the instructions basically to let us teleport and let us kind of turn where we're looking at. It's something called a snap turn. Uh, the one thing with teleporting though is that you need to tell Unity if a place is allowed to be teleported to or not. Otherwise you could just teleport up a wall, right? So they want you to specify the area that you're allowed to teleport in. So to do that, we need to make either a teleport area or a teleport um, or a teleportation anchor. So uh, the teleportation area here, let's add one. Let's bring it up to zero zero and uh, maybe pull it a little bit up so it's not clipping through the ground. So here's the teleportation area. I'll put that on the left to show you how it works. And um, let's add a teleportation anchor as well. Just go to XR teleportation anchor, zero it, move it up a little bit so it's not clipping, and move it over to the right side. You'll see the main visible difference immediately is that the teleportation anchor has a weird little box in the middle. What could that be? Well, if we press play, or if we put on our VR headset and then press play, you will see that that box disappeared right now, right? Hmm. And when I hover my kind of red lasers over each of these, these are ray cast pointers. When I hover them over them, you'll see it turns white. Okay. To select, we pull the grab button. 
So that may d vary depending on your controller. On the Oculus Quest, it's kind of the one that's where your middle finger is, not the trigger. So you'll see when I pull it, I can teleport to wherever I'm pointing. Um, though the color white definitely is <laughs> is kind of blending in here, so it's not really helping me show you. Okay. But you'll notice when I clicked over here, so that side over here, right, this is the teleportation area. I can click around and I can point and go to anywhere I want. See, if I'm in the shadow, it's easy to see. Right, I can point and go to anywhere I want. But if I click even on this corner of the teleportation anchor, I'm in the middle. Think of it like uh, a teleportation area is an area you want to be able to move around freely, but an anchor is something that's for specific spots, maybe like a uh, a seat in an arena or in a lounge or something. So if you want someone to be able to just jump and sit in a virtual seat, you probably would choose a teleportation anchor, since it always puts them in the same exact spot. All right. Um, and also we have snap turn enabled, which means I can press sideways on my control stick and it will push, it'll turn me around a set number of degrees. Right now it's 45. All right. Um, <laughs> but you'll notice we can't teleport anywhere over here, right? We can only teleport to these areas. I want to change that. So, right, like we can, we want to be able to teleport across this whole terrain, right? So I'll show you how to do that. First, turn off VR. And the first thing we want to do, I'm going to do, is I'm going to delete this anchor. Because I don't really think we're going to be using teleportation anchors today much. Just wanted to show you how they work. And if you look at teleportation area, really all it is, is a plane with a teleportation area script on it. What this means is if we delete this one, we can just put the teleportation area script on anything we want to teleport to. So I'm going to put it on the terrain. Just go to add component on terrain. Teleportation area. And suddenly, you'll see when we go into VR. That we go. All right. You'll see when we go into VR that we can teleport anywhere that we can point. Wow, we can move really fast. We can even walk over to the ball. But hey, we don't have any way to touch the ball yet. Hmm. Yeah, what if we want to grab the ball? Let's add that. Let's add a way to grab the ball. Alright, so all we have to do to grab the ball is add the component called XR Grab Interactable. So to do that, all I'm going to do is just gonna go add component XR Grab Interactable. There we go, on the sphere. And we get this big script. There's a few things I want to change here. First, I want to change how physics works for this. I think we want something more precise since we're going to be playing with it. So let's change it from discrete to continuous dynamic on the collision of the rigid body. Then I also want to change um, the way that it knows where the ball is. I, I wanted to throw it around. So we need it to keep track of the velocity of the ball rather than just its position. So to do that, I'm going to go to movement type and change that to velocity tracking. And uh, if you want, some people like to turn on smooth position, which basically just means that it will be less erratic in its movements, but I'm okay with leaving it off. And uh, you'll notice that throw on detach is on. All right, let's go see what this does. Gonna save and let's run. Alrighty, let's go teleport over there, 
And you'll notice we still can't like touch the ball, but we can grab the ball. All I have to do is just hold the grab button while pointing at it and it'll suck it to me and I can just throw it up. I can catch it out of the air. Bounce it off the wall. Sorry about that. I can bounce it off the wall. I can, uh, or, you know, to the extent that it could bounce. It's not really a bouncy object right now. It's made of rock. <laughs> uh, but we can pick it up, we can throw it. We drop it over here and let it roll. We can throw it between hands. Uh, there is one weird thing that you're going to notice, though, which is you can move it forward and backwards. That's kind of odd, right? Uh, most of the time, I don't think you're going to want this. If you want it, sure, that's fine. But uh, I think we'll let's turn that off. Let's make it so that we can't uh, move that around anymore. Along with, let's change some other stuff, too. Um, but first, let's do that. So all I got to do... Take up my headset. And let's go to our hands, because uh, that's where this issue is. First thing we're going to do is we're going to select both of our hands at the same time. To do that, we go into XR Origin, Camera Offset, and hold Control and click on left hand controller and right hand controller. It'll select both of them. Anything we change will happen to both of them. So all we want to do to make it so that we can't kind of push the ball in and out is turn off anchor control, which you'll see down here under XR Ray Interactor. I'm going to turn that off. All right. That's pretty. That's a pretty simple change. Now it won't be able to move forward and backwards. Uh, but there's a few other things we could do, right? Right now we can't even touch the ball. So, how about we, wouldn't it be nice to have some hands of some sort? Um, all we have to do to make hands is to give a model prefab to this little line down here in, on each controller. So, anything you put into here will be a hand. Uh, so, let's make a hand. Um, this is going to be a little bit weird, but we're going to do it. Um, so first I'm gonna to go to assets so that we kinda of have a clean little folder here. I'm gonna zoom out up here and let's, I think like capsules would make for good hands. So I'm gonna add a game object. Free object, capsule. Once again, I'm gonna zero it because it's in the middle of nowhere. And it is pretty big. I don't think you'd want your hand to look like this. Okay. How about we make this a little bit more hand sized? Um, there's a couple things you need to know about making hands. The first is uh, that it will point in the direction of this blue arrow. So whatever the blue arrow is pointing at is kind of like the, the pointing side. Um, so let's make our hands small. Maybe like 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And let me zoom in so you can see it. And I want this capsule to lay along this axis because again the blue arrow is where our hand will be pointing so um, I'm gonna tip it sideways I'm just gonna go to rotation along X set that to 90 and uh, yeah now the green arrow is where it'll be pointing <laughs> um, but you get what I mean um, well actually there's <laughs> it's not totally done this is this is the really weird step we want to create an empty object, doesn't matter what you call it. We want to put this capsule, oops, uh, let me first make sure the, ca the object is at zero, zero. We want to put the capsule into the object like it's a child of this empty object, so that now the game object, or now the, the blue arrow does line up properly, right? Th that's what we're kind of doing here. Uh, there's a few other weird things going on. Just trust me and follow these steps and you will have hands. All right, just make a capital, turn it sideways, put it inside of a game object, make sure they are both aligned at zero, zero. You'll see this one says zero, zero, this one says zero, zero, zero. All right. 
And now we're going to take, we're going <laughs> to click and drag game object down to here, and it will make a prefab of the object we just used. Yeah, the combination of these two that we just made. Again, a, pr a prefab is like a, think of it like a bunch of different aspects of an object, all predefined, all already laid out. So in this case, this f prefab has a capsule turned sideways inside of an empty object. Now that we've made the prefab, we don't need this anymore. Get out of here. Delete. We have our prefab down here. So now when we go to our hands, I'm going to I'm going to control click on left hand and right hand controller. I'm going to go down to where it says model prefab and we can just drag in the prefab. All right. Now we should be good. We will have hands. Uh, these the capsules have colliders on them, which means that we will now be able to interact with the ball uh, as though we had kind of physics hands. All right, so take a look. So you'll see now here we are. I can teleport around everywhere. I can walk up to this ball, and I can hit it. Isn't that fun? Oh, it's moving pretty fast. You'll see when you grab it that it wants to go to the middle, but it's held back because, again, now our hands have physics. Fun. We're gonna hit it with our hands now. We throw it. Kind of bounce off our hand. So that's pretty cool. All right, now to add some more stuff. How about walking around without teleporting? That might be important. So let's take off our headset. Let's turn off VR. And let's go uh, let ourselves move around smoothly. All we got to do is go to locomotion system and add in, it's called smooth, or, sorry, it's called continuous, continuous move provider. And we want to type, we want to choose, make sure you choose the action based one. Remember, there's going to be action based and non action based so pick action based and um, here's another one you can add this continuous turn provider action based uh, think of it like normally we can we're snap turning around which is better uh, for sim sickness uh, the reason we teleport by the way is your brain when you if you're moving in VR it thinks that uh, you should be feeling forces on your body and on your head from the acceleration of moving forwards. And when it doesn't feel those, it starts to make you feel sick. It thinks you're poisoned. Similarly, if we turn our body, like if we're smoothly turning in VR, it, our body will wonder, why am I not feeling that twisting movement? And it will think that we're sick. So. Uh, it'll, to avoid that, typically you use teleportation and snap turn. But once you kind of get your legs in VR, you're able to probably handle more continuous movement. And a lot of games require continuous movement. So to deal with that, we would just add in a continuous move provider. When we have a continuous move provider, we want to make sure we disable the teleportation provider because we, we are not going to do both at the same time. And we also need to set this up to work. Um, cause right, the move provider, think of it like a joystick, like you're just pushing in the direction and you'll move that direction. So if we want to move ourselves around, we probably want one hand to move and the other hand to turn. So I'm just going to choose my, uh, right hand for movement. Oh, sorry, I'm going to choose my left hand for movement and my right hand for turning. That's kind of the typical, that's the usual way that it is in most games, right? So uh, all we have to do to do that is turn off right hand move action, which is use reference, uncheck that for continuous move provider. And for continuous turn provider, we want to uncheck the left hand. All right. 
So now, uh, I should turn off snap turn provider as well. Okay. So now if we press run, See, we're back in this world. But if I push around on my left stick, and it's it's head based, by the way, so it it chooses where to go based on head. There's ways to change it so that it'll go based on your controller. But right now we're just using it this way, and you see I can move around wherever I want. I can kind of walk on over here. I can hit the ball. Why isn't the ball triggered yet? I can hit the ball around. I can do whatever I want, and I can also turn smoothly, and wow, smooth turning really gets me, even as someone who uses VR a lot. Uh, <laughs> smooth turning is definitely uh, causes a bit of nausea. Uh, it's definitely the most intense of any of the movement things that you can do in VR. So, anyway, we can, we're, we can smooth turn now, we can smooth moves. How about getting rid of these weird lasers. I think that's a really common thing people will want. Um, how can I, instead of like grabbing with a laser, what if I just want to like, you know, pick it up when I get close to it? So let's add that real quick. Just take off my headset. And the next thing we want to do is add grabbers kind of around our hands. Uh, to do that, we want to go to our controllers. I'm going to click on both. I'm going to scroll down. And you'll see all of these line render, XR interactor line visuals. I'm going to turn that off. Turn this one off. We don't want any more lines, right? We just kind of want to grab as though it's with our own hands. Uh, XR Ray Interactor off. We want to we want to add a new feature. So to do that, we want to add something called XR Direct Interactor. XR Direct Interactor. Ah, I forgot. It'll tell you if you um, mess up that you aren't even allowed to have a ray interactor at all on a uh, something where you want to have a direct interactor. So it's more it's not enough to just disable it. You have to remove it. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to remove component. This is it going to remove it from both of our hands, by the way? Okay. The rest of these can just stay disabled. So I'm going to, once again, add XR Direct Interactor. Here we go. It's missing one thing, though. It doesn't know where our hand is. Right? It needs to have kind of a collision box for what our hand would be, for it to know if it can pick things up yet. So we want to add a little collider, maybe a sphere-shaped collider, to uh, both of our hands. Um, right now we have both of our hands selected, so to add this collider, all we got to do is go to Add Component, Sphere Collider, and it's probably pretty big right now. It's actually pretty massive. Let's let's downsize that a little bit. Maybe the radius should be ooh the center's offset. Let's center that and uh, let's make it. Maybe uh, half the size, right? That sounds about right to you. Let's go, right now it's at 50. What if we changed it to 0 0.2? Yeah, that's probably a good radius around your hand. The last thing we, we need to change about this is we want to make sure it's set to is trigger. And uh, then you're good. So uh, let's, let's give it a try. I'm actually going to go back to a local motion system real quick. 
and because of how painful continuous turn is, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to turn back on snap turn, and I'm going to make sure that's also only on my right hand. Okay. So, saving. Let's go into VR once again. So, click the play button. Controllers, real quick. Where's my last controller? There it is. All right. So here we are, back in the world. I can snap turn. I can walk around wherever I want. And now there's no more lasers, right? No more lasers. Um, so let's let's kind of walk over to this ball. If we want to grab, I can grab, and it just kind of jumps to my hand. Right? This is normal. So I can't do it from a distance anymore. I gotta get up close. And then I can grab the ball. We could, if we wanted, we could turn off physics when we're making the prefab so that it doesn't have physics and it'll jump right into your hand. But right now we just kind of keep it on because it's fun to be able to play with objects. I could let go of this, I can balance it between my hands. It's kind of fun. Okay. Um. So ending play, the final feature we want to add is the ability to run this on any computer, right? any device. It's Right now we can kind of play it in here, but it's choppier, it's not efficient. And if you want to be able to run it you know, on a Quest, you, you want to be able to run this on a computer, you want to give this to your friends, this game you made, you're going to want to be able to export your file. Um, as an executable to package it up. So all we do for that is we want to go to File, Build Settings, we want to Add Open Scenes, and then you would go to Build. When you click Build, it'll ask you what folder do you want. You're going to want to find somewhere you can have a little, a little folder because um, it's going to put all of the materials with it as well. So kind of make a zone. Typically, I have this thing called code, and in code, my code folder, I have a bunch of subfolders for my projects. Each one I have. Okay. Uh, so I'm not going to export it today. It takes a long time, but that's what you'd want to do. All right. So yeah, given that you've follow these instructions you should be able to make a simple VR game and um, you can always add things on to this in order to do more stuff you know um, create new hand shapes build different worlds um, make different areas to teleport to you know all the mechanics you want to do but I hope this has covered the basics of making something in VR um, if you want to go try out some VR headsets stop by the uh, virtual environment studio on the fourth floor of the library in uh, 4020 and uh, we have a bunch of different kinds of VR headsets and you can come and you can even play games and um, if you would like to borrow a headset you can go to the studio's technology lending desk on Torg Bridge and there you can rent sorry not rent you can borrow VR headsets um, and even you can even borrow uh, more intense pieces of equipment from there even board games all sorts of stuff there so definitely check it out uh, and yeah yeah and so I've been Alex Krasner GA at BES thank you for coming to this workshop